Hello, this is Victoria. Thank you for visiting my channel. Today, I'm continuing with the 80s throwback move, and I'll be working on an illustration of Gem and Pizzazz. For starters, I'm going with the new comic book look for them, instead of the animated cartoon look. If you didn't know, there's a new Gem comic book. It's published by EDW, written by Kelly Thompson, art by Sophie Campbell, and colors by me. Check it out if you haven't already. Okay, onto the illustration. The software I'm using is Manga Studio EX4. I do the whole process here. Sketch, pencils, inks, and sometimes flats. I've been using this program for over 5 years now, and I use it for almost all my digital illustration and comics. New versions of this program are out already, but I like how this one works much better. The lines just come out exactly how I want them. It quickly became my go-to drawing software. To start this illustration, I've created a new page in my book. I'm using the pencil tool, I've roughed it, did a couple pencil passes, and now it's inking time. Inking is one of my most favorite parts of the drawing process. I love working with clean lines and adding little details everywhere. I'm using the G-Pen for all the outside lines, and the Madu Pen for the interior details. I have the strokes and correction boxes unchecked, and I just work with my tablet's pressure settings. You'll see I redo lines when I'm not happy with them, especially curves. My left hand's always alternating between custom tool keys, Ctrl Z for undo, and Ctrl S for saving. I've lost so many hours of work because of software crashes that it's now second nature to save all the time. As for my tablet, I'm using a Wacom Intus Pro, medium size. Something you have to learn to be able to use this kind of tablet is to separate your eyes from your hand movement. Some people dislike not being able to see their hands as they draw. It's something you have to learn to do over time. I place the tablet on my lap as I cross my legs on my chair like a pretzel and just work from there. Because this is not a Cintiq where you simply rotate the physical screen, I depend on the rotating tool to get the most comfortable angles to draw. I am so happy that tool is now practically standard in all art software. I draw on the standard black and white bitmap layers, sometimes creating new ones for details so I can erase without getting rid of anything that's already on the canvas. Sometimes, I create new layers to make coloring easier. Face features, designs, any line art that I already know from the get-go will be detailed and have a separate color. You'll see me do it here with their makeup. I draw on the new layer, then with the Layers property tab, I can change the line art color to blue, shortcut Ctrl B. It's very useful for when I export everything as a flat file. I just select everything that's blue and create a new layer in Photoshop. I've asked my followers on Facebook, Twitter and Tumblr to give me some feedback about my new videos. I was mostly wondering if I should just keep the music or try to do voiceovers. I'm actually extremely shy when it comes to talking, but I am aware that videos with voiceovers are more fun and people say they wanted to hear me talk about my drawing process. By the way, shout out to John, Marshall, Nessie, Jen, Kato, and Tanu Kitsune for taking a look at my videos before I made them live, and everyone who replied giving me feedback. In general, I'm all over the place when it comes to the process. I normally don't do thumbnails or color tests, I just dive right into it. I'm pretty horrible. I decided I had to draw jam and pizzazz with a cat, roughed out the composition that I had in mind and just started working. Super straightforward. That's not to say I never struggle. Poses don't work sometimes, expressions, fashion choices, and I have to try to do some variations. In this case, I wasn't sure the mouth I gave pizzazz was the best. I tried something different after finishing in everything, but I ended up keeping the first one. This illustration was crystal clear how I wanted it to be. 
I love it when illustrations work out like that. Gem to Little Me was basically Sailor Moon with instruments. I was, and still am, obsessed with stars, magical characters and girl teams. The episodes themselves are a bit hazy in my memory, but the songs, the instruments, the characters. I knew her dress had to have stars everywhere, and the bigger the hair, the better. For Pizzazz, her sneer is her most recognizable feature, but since she has a soft spot for cats, according to the comic, she has a hard time keeping up her persona in front of Jem, who obviously is Jerry in disguise. Ink's done, it's time for coloring. I usually lay down flats in Manga Studio, but this time I decided to do it directly in Photoshop. I close up any line or openings with a pencil tool using the base color I am going to fill in, then use the bucket tool with no anti-alias and all layers and contiguous select. I've decided to do an improved shading style from the comic, to keep in line with it. I simply color in the shadows, and then I use a soft eraser for that gradient look. I will add some highlights, hair mostly, but I want to keep it simple so the line art shines through. Color palettes are very important for visually striking characters, but there's no formula. You have to set the parameters yourself, and it's a mix of years of practice and studying artwork and recognizing feelings. Your work is expected to give an emotional reaction to a viewer, and you have to be able to identify what you're giving them. The holograms and the misfits both have strikingly different palettes for a reason, and when they clash together, it has to be earth-shattering. But not everything has to be loud and in your face. Have you noticed, for example, that the misfits and the holograms have two different shadow colors? Just a little detail to highlight their rivalry.
its areas of shadow are done with the pencil tool. Since my images are pretty large, I prefer to work without anti-aliasing for convenience. I will switch around though, depending on what I need. Again, I'm not using any curve tool here. I will sometimes make a straight line by clicking somewhere, hold shift, and clicking where I want that line to end up. This particular shading style aims to define volume without fully rendering the characters. I combine hard and soft shadows with few highlights. It's basically a cell shading style, with some flourishes. There are many different ways to color, but this one in particular is quite fun for me. I plan to show other styles in my future videos and try new methods playing outside my comfort zone. Another fun part, adding highlights. Lines, dots, I go overboard and add them whatever I feel it needs them to create volume for the drawing. I will sometimes add a layer effect to create even more shine, as I like to push contrast and saturation. I also like to color the line art with different colors depending on what's the color of the item, skin, hair, clothes, but this time I didn't and just color a few instances to soften the image. Final fixes. I try to catch any mistakes I might have made and make sure it all looks okay. And that's it. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video and I'd like to hear your feedback on it. I want to make the best videos for you to watch. Subscribe if you'd like to see more and check out the finished illustrations in the links below. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr and Instagram for more updates, illustrations and comics. Thank you for watching, see you next time.